Praise the Lord. Brother Daniel Gums here, of course, you know, a.k.a. The Goofy Gums. Thank you for jumping on to our premier live Facebook video. Uh, excited to bring to you and explore the question, where are my volunteers? And the three things you might want to say to them. Uh, we're going to explore this and share it before we get started. If you would, in the comments section, you should see the Goofy Gums YouTube channel link. If you will, at the end of today's uh, video, click that button, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Uh, at the same time, if you will, hit the bell, and then that little bell will allow you to get notifications of new content every time it comes out. Two or three times a week, new content is coming out. Uh, but nevertheless, hit that button, and then on top of it, share this video. If you are uh, able and willing, and you'd like others to, to hear the information and the content that's being shared today, don't do a watch party. Hit the share bit, hit, hit the share button and say something about it, and then push it out there, and uh, others, others will be blessed. So I'm going to hit the nail on the head. I'm going to just jump right in. Of course, Brother Gums, I'm a, I'm a glasses-wearing individual, so I'm going to have my glasses on today. Uh, that way I can see everything that I'm sharing with you. But the thought came to me uh, earlier this week, and I thought, <clears throat> and not to dive too much in, I'm going to let the content speak for itself, but I just thought, man, we have so many volunteers, or we did have so many volunteers. There are a lot of volunteers in different capacities, different levels, uh, different input, different giving, and all this kind of stuff, and I just it just dawned on me and I thought, you know what, we've got to talk about this topic. And it's really straight and to the point. Please take the information. I think on the earlier uh, shout out for the video to come today, I said grab a paper, pad of paper and a pen. So write down some things. Maybe there's a small little something that you could use and be encouraged with to help encourage others. That's what this is all about. It's all about encouraging others. And if you could figure out a way of giving more than taking, then you're going to bless others. And in turn, there's a blessing. Jesus Christ is our biggest example, the best example of all. He gave more than he took, and he blessed others. And in that, he was blessed. In Jesus' name, amen? So let's dive right into it. Again, we're exploring the question, where are my volunteers? And the three things you might want to say to them. So how have you been use, utilizing your kids' ministry volunteers in the time that we're in right now of staying out of church, of having online kid services, of ministering through Zoom meetings, of uh, whatever you're doing to bless your children during this time as a leader, as leaders of children's ministry, how have you been utilizing your kids' ministry volunteers? This is from the ones that are at your constant side, working what seems to be countless hours to see weekly success. So that's from those that are working hand in hand with you. They never even disappeared at all. Uh, right when we went into this, this drama, you had some people right there ready and willing and able to help assist you in ministering to children through all this social media platform. <clears throat> all the way to the volunteers who are your assistants even in your classrooms. So even to the helpers, even to the helpers, from the ones that are just in your face ready to go to the ones that were just helpers. Now I say just, but just meaning maybe not with you every single week or not right up there at your you know, right arm uh, you know, hand of, of helping, but, but they were your helpers into some capacity, even to the lowest of levels. That's where I want to lend our focus today. We must not forget they are the many hands that make light work and that make our jobs an easier task. We all know, that we all know especially leading from the top, when a volunteer is missing and we have to do the fill-ins. Think back to the days when you had call-outs, right? The substituting, the teaching for our absent volunteers. We absolutely know the importance of the assisting the support of our volunteers. Amen? Amen. I'm going to assume that you all are staying in contact, constant contact, to the people who are your right-hand helpers. Okay? 
or the ones who are extroverts, like I mentioned, and they have helped themselves by staying in touch with you, uh, taking the initiative, what can I do, okay? But what about that volunteer that when we get through all this craziness that we're all involved in right now, that may just be a wandering, willing vessel. However, because we have not stayed connected to them, they have lost maybe a bit of desire. They may have lost a bit of interest in supporting you or the classroom that they once assisted in when the time comes to us getting back to church, us getting back to classroom, us getting back to kids' church services. You must make them and it a priority. We've got to figure out a way to reach to that small, smallest amount of giving that they've given to the children, that they've given to the kingdom. That's really what this is about. It's not about church. It's all about kingdom. This is Christ's kingdom. And these that gave some of their time, that helped out once a month, or that maybe uh, uh, donated crafts only, or maybe just anybody to whatever capacity, the smallest amount is where I'm thinking right now. The ones that give, maybe not the full uh, uh, amount of giving and, and leading and all this stuff, but your, your, your volunteers that give in assisting and in supporting, Maybe areas that no one else sees. These volunteers, that's where I'm lending the focus to today. We have to take the initiative to reach out. You have to send a text, make a phone call, send an email in Jesus' name. That's the attention I wanted to bring to your attention today. I wanted to bring that focus to every single volunteer. We want to make sure we have prepared every single volunteer that when we get back to the classroom and that when we get back to kids church that they are poised with a great expectation of coming and being a part and helping once again you've got to position them right now before we get there you, you i mean you you're going to contact them a week before when pastor says all right we're going back to church Okay, well, now you need my help. Well, what about the ones that have thought maybe it's not something I want to do? I'm telling you, you've got to be in constant communication, constant contact with every single individual from doing the biggest amount of work to the smallest amount of work. You've got to get them in position and knowing that they're important and knowing that they're needed and knowing these things so that when you are ready, you're not lacking volunteers. It's going to be needed. God is going to send us an influx God is already preparing an influx of children to come to our churches, and we've got to be ready. You already have a, a bag full of helpers, a satchel full of people ready to help, or at least that we're helping, and we've got to keep them plugged in. So here are my three shares for what you might say to them, okay? Number one, you might say, you are missed. You are missed. Communicate that to them, that they are a missed individual. Speak to them on a very on a very one-on-one -on -one level. Communicate with them and let them know that they are missed because of the support. Highlight things that they've done before. Share with them, you know, these things that they used to do. The kids loved it. Whatever it takes, mention those words. You are missed. And here's the reason why. Communicate that to them. That's number one. Number two, share this with them. Share this word. You are needed. Point out things to them. Areas that they have fulfilled before. Areas and needs that were taken care of by them giving. Let them be aware of it with thankfulness that they are needed to continue to do this job. They are needed because there's no other person that's going to be able to do what they did before. You need them. You need their support in blessing children still. Okay? That's number two. Number three. Jesus and the kiddos have not forgotten about you. This is what you tell them. Jesus and the kiddos have not forgotten about you. And are still waiting on you when you get when we all get together 
again, for classes and kids' church. So you want to bring to their attention the fact that Jesus still desires, because he put that desire in them to work in kids' ministry in the first place. Jesus is still looking and waiting and wanting their support. You want to make sure that they acknowledge not only you blessing them and seeing that need and thankfulness and letting them know that they're missed, but you want to let them know that Jesus has had his continued eyes looking at them, and that the kids are at home thinking, and then throw their name in there, Tom. They've been thinking, Brother Tom, you know, I can't wait to get back to his class. They've been thinking about Sister Trish, you know, uh, the one that helped me make sure I had my juice boxes. Um, you know, so the kids and Jesus together, together, have not forgotten about them in Jesus' name. So there it is, the question that I ask and shared with you today and explored where are my volunteers and the three things you might say to them. I'm going to pray a blessing on you and ask God to give you strength to do those things. In Jesus' name, Lord, by the authority and the power of your word, I pray for every single person paying attention right now to these words. I pray that you would uplift them with strength, with grace and mercy. I pray that you would anoint their communication with all of their teachers, amongst themselves, back and forth, God. I pray that you would, I plead your blood upon that relationship, in those relationships. And I pray, God, that you would nourish it and that you would make it a blessing, bountiful blessing for both, Lord Jesus, the communicator and the person being communicated to. I pray, God, that you would bless them, prepare, continue to prepare their hearts and making them that willing vessel, God, to do your will. I plead your blood upon every single person. Bless them now for the glory of your name and to bless children in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's it. Remember uh, remember these things that I've shared with you. Make sure you go out and encourage your volunteers. They are there. They're still there. You've got to connect with them. Bless them. Make, them. make them feel important because they are in Jesus' name. Don't forget, once again... In the comment section, the Goofy Guns channel, please subscribe to the Goofy Guns channel. We appreciate you all. God bless from the gums. In Jesus' name, amen. It's the Goofy Gums.